Hello, dear friends. Louisa Spear speaking, Professor Louisa Spear, Professor of Geriatric Gerontology and Old Age Psychiatry. I'm very happy to meet you again with the new Coney edition. This time we are going to speak about the stress and dementia. My personal relationship with stress and dementia is a long, long one since childhood, when I never believed in the chronological age. But this is, this is going to be the subject of another discussion. Let's now focus on what I intend to share with you today, stress and dementia. There is no study of the relation between the stress and cognitive function that can neglect certain important problems, starting with a very simple definition of stress. But what is, the what is in fact to define stress? Stress has a different meaning from, for different people under different conditions. The first and the most generic definition of stress is that proposed by Heinz, Hans Selye, that the stress is the non-specific response of the body to any kind of demand. That means that it's an aggressor for all of us and it can have the face of any kind of aggressor. Stressors may be categorized across several dimensions, including intensity, duration, novelty, and type. I just offered you here the most important examples of types of stressors that I consider really, uh, really important to be mentioned. The mundane stress, this is referring to ge geographical relocation, night shift work, com commuting, the extreme stress, the second one, threat of death of bodily injury, personal illness, and loss of a loved one through illness or separation as well, as more many other reasons. But the variations in one response to a stressor involves appraisal of danger, perceived predictability and controllability, and the potential development of the psychopathologies. That is really important to know. But speaking about stress, how shouldn't we mention the PTSD, the post-traumatic stress disorder? The long-term cognitive consequences of exposures to the cumulative ordinary life stresses, as well as extraordinary traumatic events leading to post-traumatic stress disorder means PTSD, as you know. But the suggestive effects that have been demonstrated for the role of life stress in general and more about the post-traumatic stress disorder in, in particular, on a range of negative cognitive outcomes, including worse than normal changes with aging, like Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia. It's really important to mention, like, like Greenberg did in, and her team did in 2014, a magnificent study. Let's, let's go a little bit deeper in what means the evidence that mundane stress may lead to dementia. There is a longitudinal study of almost 11,100 individuals showed an association between the level of perceived stress in midlife and the incidence of dementia in old age. It's uh, Nabe Nissel et al, the study in 2019. During a mean follow-up of almost 14 years, reflecting 100,050 almost person years as risk, they identified around 1,500 patients with a new diagnosis of dementia. This analysis found that their perceived stress was associated with a higher risk of dementia even after adjusting, this is very important, after adjusting for cardio, cerebrovascular diseases, and health behaviors like smoking, physical activity, frequency of alcohol intact, misuse of medication, uh, body mass index, all these items that are really important regarding our lifestyle. The psychological stress may indeed increase the risk of dementia through its effect on the cardiovascular disease, the other pathways such as depression, the chronic sleep problems, which is also very important. But furthermore than this, stress may activate psychological stress responses, resulting in the elevated cortisol levels, which we know today, in turn could lead to cortisol-induced atrophy of the brain, 
There are few important studies in the last few years. The several studies reveal an association between dementia and the somatic symptoms as a reaction to the emotional uh, strain. The self-reported stress in relation to circumstances in everyday life, life, such as work, health, or family situations. <clears throat> but there are also differences between the subgroups that need to be taken into account when investigating the link between the mundane stress and dementia. And here, if we speak about this, the potential impact of stress on the development of dementia and what is really interesting and important for us for the early interventions in dementia or the other forms of cognitive dysfunctions may be considered from the standpoints of the individuals, the stressor and the stress response. This may differ between men versus women. The age may also influence the vulnerability to, to psychological stress. The employment status potentially can capture important information about uh, people's health, exposure to work-related stressors, and their economic and social living conditions, which is also something that, that we, we fully understand these days. You know that speaking about stress and lifestyle, it's also speaking about each of us. There is an evidence that extreme stress like PTSD may lead to dementia, and I will try to focus a little bit on that. There is a meta-analysis by Gunak and colleagues dated 2020, this year. It's a pool data from 10 studies investigating their role of the PTSD for all cause dementia and found that after controlling for several confounders like age, sex, depression, substance misuse, the association between the PTSD and dementia remains significant. And the risk of being diagnosed with dementia for individuals with a diagnosis of PTSD is almost two times higher as the risk for those without a PTSD diagnosis. <clears throat> but the difference between the subgroups that need to be taken into account when again we speak the, about the link between extreme stress and dementia, in, and dementia uh, it's very important when we speak about the effect of PTSD in the general population, which is larger than the effect in the veterans with an increased risk of about 111 and in percentage 61% respectively. In the general population, the risk is being diagnosed with dementia in individuals with PTSD, like being more than twice the risk in those with no PTSD diagnosis. And this is also something very important to, uh, to be known. In the veteran population, for example, with PTSD, the risk of dementia is more than one and a half times higher to that of veterans without a PTSD. And the smaller risk observed in veterans is because they are more likely to receive treatment of PTSD than the general population. And this can indicate for sure that PTSD-related dementia could be modified by intervention. And this is something that we really uh, have to understand and to know. Going, going now uh, deeper and deeper into the underlying mechanisms which is also, it's probably thousands of pages have been, have been written and uh, not so many, uh, not so, not more than a few hundred articles related to stress, not for PTSD, of course, for PTSD, there is a, a strong literature, a scientific literature. But speaking about the underlying mechanisms, uh, the mechanisms of the association between PTSD and dementia remain to a large extent unknown. And why that? It has been proposed that certain neurobiological pathways, not specific to, but potentiated by the PTSD, may increase risk of developing dementia. And these pathways includes, include the altered activity of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the HPA axis, and the reduction in hypocampal volume and the oxidative stress. There are nice studies by Miller and Vance in 2012, in 2000, uh, 
nine, 18, but we need much more to study. Um, it's important to it's important to go a little bit a little bit further and to understand that the constant hypervigilance and recurrent re-experiences of the trauma may activate threat and stress related neurobiological pathways, including including in an increasing vulnerability to dementia. It's the Friedman study in 2019, a very good one, as um, regarding the PTSD symptoms develop, avoidance and withdrawal from daily and social life may result in diminished cognitive stimulation, reducing the individual's cognitive reserve, reserve and resilience, something that we always try to try to keep in in a good shape and we try to have early intervention always from this point of view. And uh, also the resilience to neuropathological changes associated with dementia has to be one of our most important focus as, as uh, clinicians and specialists and researchers in this field. The PTSD and dementia may also share common underlying genetic vulnerability with pathways between the two being between the two being bidirectional. We have a nice uh, study in 2020. I've mentioned here this matter. I I will try to make few conclusions after this brief presentation um, regarding the relationship between stress and dementia and uh, the effect of stress not only on our patients, but also on ourselves. And being a medical doctor is not very easy this time, especially the last seven months, eight months of pandemia. Um, there are several research challenges. These have to be mentioned. Defining and quantifying stress. This is what we do. We began to do that 13 years ago after studying uh, everything about dementia, making research for 24 years in the field of, of neurocognitive uh, disorders and uh, the last 15 years in early intervention in, in, in cognitive impairment and also using technology for 15 years and uh, um, new, uh, new assistive tools to, 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 dec to, to decline the cognitive uh, uh, to decline and to help patients with, with early cognitive decline. There should be methodological differences which may lead to conflicting results. There are also complex interactions between different variables and confounders which should be much more studied. The several lines of, of research provide also empirical support that mundane stress play the role in negative cognitive outcomes. This is for sure. And the extreme stress is associated with a greater statistical risk for various uh, forms of dementia. Probably as nothing is um, accidental in life, um, because of our, of our passion for doing research in stress, I remember that the first presentation for stress and dementia, I did it in, in Ankara. Um, when I told Amos that I'm very interested to make a first presentation about that, I was one of the first who did that in Kony. So I continue after many years, but with, 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 a, with, a, with a progress of that. We have been created our Stress Congress, which is our brand name, is the stresscongress.com. It's our, it's our, it's on the first edition this year. It was a virtual as yours. Um, I'm, I, you are very welcome also to our editions from now on. It's a successful, it's, it grew to almost 500 participants. It's, um, it's one of the first medical stress congress um, for, um, uh, it's dedicated to all specialists from all medical fields. So I, I'm really gra grateful for this, uh, for this opportunity to, to talk to you about the stress and dementia, uh, to Professor Ramos Korchin and the other co-chairs. And I congratulate uh, all the team for all your results and for your effort to continue this wonderful scientific event. Thank you so much.